हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन इन द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द लेक्चर सीरीज टुडे वी हैव दिस इज वसुमती श्रीकांत श्री नागेश टू टेल यू हाउ टू मेंटेन योर रेफरेंसिंग सिस्टम वसुमती जी इज अ फाउंडर एंड सीईओ ऑफ क्यू मेड नॉलेज फाउंडेशन मुंबई and she is also former medical librarian hinduja hospital and help mumbai she is creator of four online courses information resources and the literature searching introduction to referencing and mastering and pub, mastering pubmed and reference management she has got been recognized by many uh, awards like uh, maharashtra university of health sciences speaker uh maharashtra medical council speaker and academy of health professional educator members she has got uh, teaching 500 plus lectures webinars including some keynote addresses 245 workshops on literature searching and referencing that's what she is going to teach you and she has got expertise in systematic uh, uh, review uh, searching duplicates and reference management she has received award like recipient of international award at annual conference of medical library association of U of the usa uh vasumati mrs vasumati uh, has given her time to teach you something very very important which is important for all of us and this is basically to learn how to understand and manage referencing system so use of referencing manager you will learn from her today uh, you can start vasumati uh, ji you can start and uh, whatever you have questions please write down in the chat box we will take it at the, at the end you can continue please thank you thank you and good morning just give me a second yeah can somebody just good morning you can see my yeah, screen can see, hear me yeah we can see screen and you we can hear also wonderful so thank you for this invitation uh, can i have a very quick uh, answer how many of you have used any reference manager mendeley zotero and note just a yes no just for me to get an idea so far most have said yes only one no okay i think that's good enough if there are three yes is two no's i get a nine that's fine that's fine right so i'll just get started give me a second great so thanks once again for this invitation for me uh, it's a thing of our mission that we spread our knowledge so every opportunity is important so i'm going to skip this slide because dr sushma bhat kan patnagar has actually included all this in the introduction and go straight to the topic reference management as i call it and use of reference managers which is more important so just a second now when we write any article even a simple letters to the editor if we want to add citations and create a reference list whether you're using a reference manager or not what we need is we have to be ready with what are called bibliographic details of anything that we have read and we want to cite it could be a journal article book a book chapter a website anything we need to have those basic details ready author title date etc and every publication we are submitting to requires certain elements compulsory and the way in which it is written in a specific manner so for example if we see this article in the first paragraph we see 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc those are citations end of the article we have this reference list in the same order if you see each of them has author title name of the journal etc these are called bibliographic details it's a technical term 
What bibliographic details do we need? This is one website. There will be others which gives exactly what is required everywhere, irrespective of the style in which we write it. So I know you're going to get this presentation at the end. In case you need a screenshot, go ahead and take this. Also, whichever publication you are submitting to, make sure you check the instructions to authors because there it could be super specific. This site gives you the general guideline of everything that is essential. Now, when we want these details, we've obviously got them from somewhere. We have read a journal article, we have read a book, we have seen a website and taken something, etc. So our sources of information, when we do a literature search, we search very commonly PubMed because it's free to search a bunch of other resources like Google Scholar, those who have access to things like Web of Science Scopus, you may be searching those. What happens is we download either PDFs or abstracts, lots of them, and we really end up having a mini internet on our computer. And then we have trouble finding specific items that we remember having downloaded. That wonderful article on breast cancer, we are not able to find it again. That kind of thing. So that's where enter the reference managers. What are reference managers? Softwares that you can use to create a library of references for yourself. And this is extremely important because however much you may take the trouble to store it in an organized fashion in your computer, in folders, subfolders, sub subfolders, there are good reasons why you can't retrieve them later. Whereas if you use a reference management software, it's very easy to find any abstract or any uh, PDF that you have downloaded. So this is like having a mini PubMed because you can search by author, search by title, search by topic, etc. And a copy of all that is on the web so that if you're away from your laptop or device, you can still use any other device to log in to your reference manager and find what you need in case there is a need. So I'm introducing Mendeley, which is a free software. Another very popular one is Zotero. Some of you may be using EndNote. EndNote is a paid software. It's approximately 15,000 for a single user. If you have it through your institution, great. But otherwise, the free, I know that many somehow get a cracked version. Very often that gives trouble at some point. If you haven't had trouble, good luck. That's great. Mendeley, Zotero are both free to use. So you're free to use any one of them. I'm going to talk about Mendeley because you need one software to explain how to use a reference manager. So this is what is what I call the Mendeley web library. That is, if you have logged on to the internet, you've gone to mendeley.com and gone to your library area. If you've already populated, this is what it would look like. You also have what you have downloaded, which is Mendeley desktop version. That will look like this, almost identical. You see the three columns. Only thing is here, you will see Mendeley desktop on top and you'll see these typical menu items. That's the difference, but otherwise the layout is about the same. Now, this library becomes a source from which you can add citations, you can add reference lists while writing your thesis or paper or any publication. We don't have to specifically type those numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, or type all those bibliographic details. That saves a lot of time, but there are lots more ways in which you save time if you use a reference manager. Now this citing and referencing part can be done only from the desktop version, not from the web version. So let us begin a quick overview on how you will be using Mendeley if you plan to use it. Now, an important thing about Mendeley, 
I just described the Mendeley desktop, the software that you download. That is an old version. There is a newer version called Mendeley Reference Manager. Desktop Reference Manager are specific words that Mendeley.com uses. Reference Manager is the newer version. Ironically, currently the desktop version is still better. The Reference Manager, there are certain difficulties and it cannot do one very important function, which I'll be describing as I go ahead. So my team and I are monitoring the reference manager. Whenever that becomes new, I'm sorry, whenever that becomes fully developed, we will switch our lectures to the Mendeley reference manager. So currently I recommend using the Mendeley desktop and I'll tell you how to go about it. So on Mendeley.com, the website, this is roughly what it looks like. Of course, the first page, the home page, they keep changing the designs off and on. The contents are more or less the same. So the first time you get into Mendeley.com, you'll have to create a free account for yourself, like you do in any shopping site, etc. And next, you can next, in a future attempts, you can sign in and use it. So once you log in, for the first time, you will click this download Mendeley reference manager here in my page. Reference manager simply means the software, not the new tool. Once you click this page, of course, subsequently you will go to library. Now, once you ask to download, today you have only the Mendeley reference manager, as I said. Earlier, we could see this download Mendeley desktop for Windows. Today, you will not see this. Actually, there's no option to download the Mendeley desktop, but it is possible today from this site. Again, you will be getting the presentation, so you will see this. Otherwise, for now, you could just note down, go to Google and simply type download Mendeley up to down. That's the site where it is saved. So download Mendeley up to down. If you Google that, you will get this result and this is the URL that I gave you in the last slide. If you click here, you can download Mendeley Desktop. So Mendeley Desktop is the Mendeley, uh, it is the software or app where you will store details of all items, books, journal, articles, etc. When I say details, I mean author, title, uh, if it's a journal article, then name of the journal, volume number, issue number, page, etc. If you have <coughs> the PDFs, you can attach them, store them as well. So, you will also need to get what is called the web importer. I'm going to show you these steps. This helps you import details of journal articles, etc. There is a condition here. If the source website has the right structure, when you go and try, you will know. Sometimes it will tell you, you cannot import this and I'll be telling you what to do in such cases. Whereas in majority of the cases today, you can import a full PDF as well if it is free on. Scroll down and click find out more below the web importer image. So actually where you download the software, if you scroll, you will come to this image called Web Importer. Further below, there's a Find Out More, and that's what you will click. And in the next screen, you will get Get Web Importer for Chrome or whichever software, you, whichever browser you're going from, you will get that particular link. So I use Chrome. So Get Web Importer for Chrome. If I click this, in the next screen, I'll be told Add this to Chrome. When I click that, then in my Chrome browser, it has got added here. You can see I've added certain other tools as well, but for this lecture, it's important to notice I have the Mendeley Web Importer in my browser. Next, you also have to do one more thing to get all ready to use Mendeley. You downloaded that Mendeley desktop. In the menu, you go to Tools, Install Word Plugin. 
So the menu part is right on top. You'll click Tools, Install MS Word Plugin. If you're using a Mac, etc., there are different instructions. Those instructions are all in the Mendeley website. So having done these three things, that is you downloaded the Mendeley software, and I'll stress again for those who have come in late, there is a Mendeley reference manager, which is the new software, Mendeley desktop, which is the old software. We are going to learn the Mendeley desktop because it still works much better than the new reference manager. So we download the software, we install a web importer to import articles. We go to, we install what is called an MS Word plugin so that you can generate citations with Biography Excel. Now that we are all set, I'm on the Mendeley web. And here, if I click library after creating my account, I will see a blank web library. Similarly, if I open the Mendeley desktop, I'll see a blank desktop library. What do we do first? A good practice before we start putting in any article, book details, etc. Create one or more folders. This, of course, is very personal. It depends on how you work. I'm assuming most of you are working on some topic or the other. So you can create folders with the name of some topics, or if you're going for an event and you want to read up stuff related to that, whether you're speaking or going as an attendee, you can just put the name of the conference or the lecture you're going to attend or give, et cetera, so that you can store relevant paper details in respective folders. I think all of us using email know the importance of having those kinds of folders or labels. So here I am on my Mendeley desktop. You can see that I've created certain folders. Now I, being an information specialist, do work sometimes for specific doctors. So this is a Cochrane library search I did for Dr. B, PubMed search I did for this person. For somebody, I did vitamin C and common cold. Sometimes I have folders related to places where I'm going to speak and I want certain articles being there. So I just have to click create folder and write the name of the folder that I want. It's as simple as that. Now that we have some folders ready, maybe even just one, how do we populate mentally? How do we add a book details or journal article details, etc., into mentally? First thing, what all can you add? Full text PDFs, I'm sure all of you have enough of them. Bibliographic details only, that is author title, place, publisher, date, if it's a book, author title, name of the journal, volume, issue, page, etc., if it's a journal article, and so on. For non-free articles, something we've done in a PubMed search, we don't have free articles, but we want to still save the details. Book details, websites, conference papers, etc., so many things that you can store. You can store actually any computer file, but if you store a Word document where you've written down some standard procedures, that will not be of help in Mendeley in any way. Mendeley is specifically meant for using anything which you will reference somewhere. Other things, it's not that you can't store, but finding them can be problematic later. Now, three methods of populating Mendeley. You can type details manually. Sounds like the most boring thing to do, but there are times when you need to do this and there are some shortcuts which I'm going to show you. Adding existing PDFs, what all you already have in your computer and when you do a PubMed or Google Scholar search, etc., suppose you have a good number of references, could be anything in two digits, three digits, four digits, you can just import the entire thing up to 10,000 records you can import. So let's go step by step. Typing manually. You want to add something manually. When do you add it manually? You're reading some very old, rare paper, which there's only uh, some kind of mention on the website, on, on a specific website. 
you're not able to actually find that paper or more details about it. Or you're reading a rare, let's say, Indian book which has never been put on the web. But you, you're reading it, you want to quote something from it, or you want to just store all the details. You have to type the details manually. As a librarian, I have done a lot of handwritten catalog cards in early in my career. This was before computers came in. It's the same logic. So how do we do this? I'm using the Mendeley desktop version, as you can see, with all these menu items. Here, there is a button called Add Files and there's a down arrow key. I click that down arrow key. I get four items. I could get these even if I click file, but I'll get lots more. That is, this makes it easy for me. Now I will click add entry manually. When I click this button, I get a pop-up like this. By default, it will show article type as journal article because most often that's what people want to add. You will type in all details here. Where it says no title, you'll erase that and type in the article of the journal. Or let's say if it's there as a mention in a website, you can copy and paste it here. That's one simple method. You'll fill in the author, journal, name, year, volume, etc. Et and once you do that, you click save and it will get saved. Now, if you want to enter a book details, you will click this down arrow here and choose book or book section, books, book chapter, etc. etc. And the fields here will change. If it's a book, it will say book title, author, um, publisher, place of publication, because those are the details that you will need to reference them. Accordingly, the fields will change. Right. There's a shortcut for typing manually. If you know the PMID, which is a unique ID of every item in PubMed, or the DOI, which is HTTP S colon slash slash DOI something something, which is a unique URL for every article, journal article. Most websites have them today. Archive ID. So archive ID is really something from physics, but you also have something called PED archive. These are preprint archives where people have mentioned something out there, not yet got it published, but once they get it published, they can claim the first right to that article. So if you have these specific IDs, which are standard IDs, what you can do in this add entry manually journal article, if you scroll further down, you can see I've scrolled down, then you have these columns here, these fields here. So if I type in a PMID from PubMed, and then importantly, I'll have to click this search icon, and more importantly, I must be connected to the internet so that Mendeley will understand it has to go to PubMed and look for this item. Once we click the search icon, it will locate it in a few seconds and it will populate all those details here. Title, author, journal name, year, usually volume issue page as well. Here it may not have done it. I've done this presentation long back, made changes, of course, every now and then. But it probably was a pre-publication thing, so there is no volume issue page yet. Other details would be their DOI or something further down. Then you click Save, and it will come into your Mendeley as a new item. So this is adding entry manually, adding existing PDFs that you already have. Again, same arrow. This time choose add files. You'll get a pop-up like you do when you're attaching email attachments. Pick up whichever article you want to add and it comes in here. You can also minimize, not minimize, uh, make this Mendeley screen smaller from your computer, wherever it is. You can drag and drop it in here in the middle pane. That's another way to do it. Now, once you're here, this was the article I imported. The bibliographic details or another word for it is metadata, which is title, author, name of the journal, all these details, automatically get extracted from this record. Fabulous, because you're all ready to 
cite and reference if you are writing a paper and want to include this. The problem is sometimes this does not get extracted properly. Then what happens when you're citing or referencing, you will be entering wrong details. So what you need to do as soon as you import a PDF is click this PDF icon. It will open the PDF right here. Check each item. Is it matching here? In some way or the other, on the first page, all bibliographic details will be there. So this part, check it with here. Each uh, PDF, it would be slightly different, but it's usually there on the first, maximum second page. You get all these details, check it. If something is not okay, you can come here, click and edit it. Make sure it's all correct. So that's exactly what I've said here. So that was the second method. The third is, how do you add literature from PubMed? Here, there are two ways of doing it. So suppose I've done a search here. I've got 25 results. Right. What I need to do, I have my Mendeley web importer here. I click first thing because by default in PubMed, you see 10 results on a page. And I want to import all 25. Whereas if I use the Mendeley web importer, it will take only what it sees on this page. Default is 10. It will import only 10. Then you'll have to repeat it twice. Go to the next page and so on. So what you do to make it easier, click this display options. And this per page, you're seeing 10. You'll need to change this 10 to 25 or whatever is the higher number there. So it will display all 25. Then you click the web importer. When you click the web importer, you get a pop-up like this. You can either select all or you can select one or more items that you want to uh, add. And the default folder, okay, at that time it was called, yeah, it's called my library, sorry. Default folder is my library. In my presentation, in some parts, you'll see it as all documents, both are the same. So if you want to change this folder to a folder you've created, click this down arrow, select that folder and import by clicking add. It will go into the folder. I'll just quickly repeat what I said. You've done a search. First, you will change the default 10 to whatever higher number. Click the web importer. You'll see this pop-up. Select all or select specific ones. If you want to save it in your main equivalent of inbox, that's fine. Or click this down arrow, select a folder, specific folder, click add. So this way you have imported a public search. Now, if you happen to have the PDF of one of those results, you want to attach it here because from a PubMed search, you're by and large importing only the bibliographic details. So for some of the results, you may have it. You can attach the PDF. How do we do that? Suppose this is the item. On this third pane, right on top, you would have seen the extracted metadata. If you scroll further down, you can see I have scrolled down here. Here, there's a attach file, add file. If you click this, you can pick up the file just the way you did add file earlier. You can pick up the file. And that file will get attached. You Just like you see PDF icon here, you'll see a PDF icon here. So once you have it all in Mendeley, it's much easier to search. I'll be showing you how. Now, suppose you have large results. Last time I, had, I showed 25. In PubMed, the maximum number you can display on one page is 200. So here, I'm just showing you an example with 271. That means you've got to do the job at least twice. But suppose you're doing a systematic review or something and you have 5,000 results, you want to import all of them. Then going page after page will go, go on forever. So I'll show you how to import all in one shot. You've got more than 200 results. You can't go page by page. There are 28 pages. And as I said, if there's 5,000, it's lots more pages. So what you'll do is to click save. When you click save, you get save citations to a file. What you will do is this you will change to 
all results from all or default is all results of this page you will change it to all results then this summary text which is default format you will change it to pubmed format these two things are very important so once you do those two changes you will see all results pubmed format once these two are very clearly chosen click create file a file will get downloaded into your computer usually into your downloads folder unless you have specified somewhere else so it's in your downloads folder in the mendeley desktop what you need to do is choose a folder where you wish to import as i said especially if there are thousands of results it's much better to import it directly into a folder so let's say you've done something like prostate neoplasms uh, or something like that or something since you're a palliative care group it will be more about palliative care for a particular condition you've created such a folder you've done a search on that keep your cursor on that folder click add files and pick up the saved file all results will get imported into this folder i'll be showing this to you here suppose in my case i had made this folder ascorbic acid common cold i have my cursor here i click this down arrow click add files then i get a pop up i go to my downloads folder where by default pubmed has named this like this pubmed ascorbic acid etc i click double click this one and all of them you can see 271 documents successfully imported into this folder same thing will happen if it's 1000 5000 whatever up to 10000 it's so much easier to have it because imagine if you had similar things in different folders your main all documents or my library which is on top will have far too many all mixed up now if sometimes you have just added one or two or 10 items and you forgot to get them into a folder what do you do you have all your folders any one folder where you are for example here i am on all documents or my life peers it's called now i can choose any one drag and drop it into any one but can you realize that's a cumbersome job so it's okay when if it's a small number large numbers directly into folders one thing is whatever you import here it actually gets imported into all documents and a copy of it is what remains here now that we populated our library how do you search it here there's a search box you can just type in whatever comes to your mind you can search like we do in google or you can also do a field by field searching so suppose i do this i select author and publication name something like that so i put in when i chose author i typed wilson i chose publication i typed nature medicine it has found one item i have where the author is wilson publication is nature medicine this is something which is very difficult to do in your computers uh, explorer the windows explorer there you will find things but you will find all sorts of other junk as well whereas here you can be as specific as author and publication name and things so it's much easier to find anything that you have here even if you don't want to write any publication or write only once in 5 years keeping a mendeley or a zotero or a note just to store everything makes a lot of sense right now in your pdfs you can click highlight and highlight something you can click note make notes like this and that annotation stays here you can see here this is the third area where details will show all the bibliographic details but if you click the second tab called notes whatever you wrote here will show here if you want this to be searchable you'll have to copy and paste it in this area as well then you can actually search here for the notes you have written that's also okay so we saw how to create the library how to search it let's go to the very exciting part citing and referencing 
as I had said earlier, from the Mendeley desktop, which we downloaded first, we need to go to tools here, install MS Word plugin. That is important for citing in. So the Word plugin, where is it? On Microsoft Word, in the References tab, you will find this once you click that Install Word plugin. All these things get installed here. Now, suppose I'm writing this article. I've written a first paragraph. I want to be very systematic and add my citations right away. So here, I position my cursor here in order to add a citation. I click this button, insert citation. When I do that, a pop-up appears like this. I have two choices. I can either, if I remember offhand, which is the author, year, title, something like that. I can type it here. It will start showing up right here. I can select the right one, click OK. That is one. Or I click go to Mendeley. I'm taken to Mendeley. I select my item. When I do this, on the main menu, a site button will come. Normally, you won't see it. It's only when you come from here, from Word, go to Mendeley, go there, click the site button. And what happens is, as I said, either you search here or go to Mendeley and do the needful. Then this reference number one will get cited here. I'll just repeat that. Either you can search here. When you're searching, it will start showing up in this area. You can select the correct one. Click OK. That's option one. Option two is click go to Mendeley. You're transported to Mendeley. You will select your article, maybe from the folder in which you have stored the necessary items for adding to this one. Then click the site button, which appears on top only when you do this. And then this number will show up here. Similarly, I've written the next paragraph and I've added citations number two, three, four, five. I can write more paragraphs, keep adding as I go. Once I do all that, then I go to the end of my article where I have the heading references, position my cursor here. Now I click this button, insert the bibliography. With that one click, all those citations are automatically here. Now, you understand why it is important that when you import anything into Mendeley or you add a PDF into Mendeley, all these items, the metadata must be accurate. Otherwise, you may get all kinds of junk out here. So it's very important that you have the metadata, author, title, journal details or book details, all accurate there so that it comes in accurately here. And imagine here, I've just shown you an example of five. What if you had 40, 200, any number of references typing, all these can be very painful. Plus, if you submit it to an article, uh, sorry, to a journal, it gets rejected. You come back, it comes back to you. You submit it to another one, it gets accepted, but they say this is not the style we want. We want it in another style. You'll have to retype all this. What can we do in Mendeley? Changing styles, change from whatever, Vancouver to say APA, and all those styles, the citation, the references, everything gets changed. So, for example, here, Vancouver, in my Demo just now I had shown Vancouver with round brackets. Here I'm showing you two with square brackets. Each of these is different. So I have this as one, two, three. And in my reference list, I have it in the same order. One, two, three. Shetty, Goenka, Bhatia. Suppose I click the change and to APA style. What would happen is it will come like this. Shetty 2020, Goenka 2020, Bhatia 2020. My reference list will come in the order of Bhatia going by Shetty. Because it has to be alphabetical. If I see this and say, hey, I want to read the Shetty paper as a reader, I'll automatically look alphabetical here. So this is where I will come. So we've saved lots of time by using this reference manager like this. Your references are well organized. Easy retrieval. Citing and referencing is a few clicks. 
changing styles of references the same. Now, of course, when you get into using, you'll find a bunch of problems here and there. That's true of any software. There are solutions to a lot of it. And usually when you write to the Mendeley support group, they will help you with this. We as a foundation help people who are registered with us. I'll talk about that at the end. Of course, up to a point in Mendeley, because if it's something technology related, which we find it difficult to diagnose, we would tell you to check with Mendeley themselves. Now, one important thing with all this is issues with duplicates. When do we get duplicate records? Suppose I search and retrieve from several sources. I'm searching palliative care in a five-year-old, something like that. I search PubMed, I search Google Scholar, I search some other resources, and I keep importing references. Or I search variations of a topic, like etiology of a disease, epidemiology of a disease on different dates. Again, I'm uh, importing details. Duplicates are bound to enter into mentally, especially if you do them across different dates or if you import large results each time. So what happens? How do you use, uh, how do you manage duplicates? Let's take a quick look here. You click, this is again in the desktop, click tools, check for duplicates. When you do this, it tells me in my library, there are 146 sets of duplicates. This is very common, not surprising. So here, I have blanked out the rest of my screen. I've kept it on the first title. What you should do is there's a right arrow key. You'll have to click this. And further below, it will show this is the item. And there are two instances of this. I have imported this item twice. So what, what's wrong if I import it twice? You know, what happens is if you have it twice in Mendeley, suppose I'm citing this article when I'm writing an article. I click the go to Mendeley and I come to Mendeley. First time I click this one and click site, it comes in as say item number three. Sometime I add a few more references. I want to cite this one once again. I again click insert citation, go to Mendeley, come here. This time I choose this physically separate item. As far as Mendeley goes, these are two different articles except when you search etc otherwise they are physically two different items second time i click this one in my word document it will come as item number something else first time i could have done item number three this if i've added five more that will become eight this will come as item number nine in my reference list the same article will come twice as different ones that is not acceptable that's exactly why you need to remove a duplicate. So how do you remove duplicates? When you do this check for duplicates, you will get messages in the third pane of Mendeley. One message will be no conflicting fields you can merge. That is both are absolutely identical. So you can click merge records and they will get merged. Sometimes it will tell you duplicates have conflicting fields. Sometimes it could show completely different things and it may be right also. Sometimes you've got to go and verify the physical items. There's a lot to do like that. If they are really duplicate and only have some mistaken entries there, you can correct it, merge it. If it's not a duplicate and if they are unique items, you will select not a duplicate. But before that, make sure that all the metadata there is right. Yes, whoever wants to reach me later, surely you can. Definitely. Right. So final recap, getting started. Mendeley.com, download desktop version. So right now you can't download it from here. I've given you the link. Otherwise, you can reach out to me. Download the web importer. Install the word plugin. These are things you have to do to get started with Mendeley. Populating the library, you can add entry manually, add file, web importer, saves records from PubMed, Google Scholar, etc. Reorganizing the library, 
create folders, add records to folders, search your library, preferably the desktop version, it works better. That was the last that I checked. I don't know if there are improvements in the web version. And cite as you write, insert citation, add bibliography with a single click, chain styles with a single click. Of course, again, a disclaimer, there are challenges you can face at different times. So I have been part of a group where we have conducted a full day workshop on Mendeley where we've addressed all kinds of problems in changing styles. Does not happen too often, but when you do, what do you do about it? So that's the, any subject has a lot of them. But for most of us, this much will work pretty well. Check the third pane for full details of record for accuracy. This third pane has to be accurate. I just told you what will happen if it doesn't. Your citations references can get mixed up. So also regularly sync the web and desktop version. Here is the sync button. You see, there's no cite button here. That will come only when you come from the Word document after saying go to mint. So do start using the reference manager soon. Definitely to create your own library for reading up anything that you want. And later, if you're writing, cite and write. So all the best. And I'll quickly tell you how you can reach out to us. This is our website, qmed.ngo. If you go to this online courses and click access qmedcourses.in, you're taken to our second website, which is QMED Courses. This is the second website. We have two free e-learning courses here. These you can learn at your pace. Every video, average videos are just five minutes long. Some are shorter. Some are about 10 minutes duration. Very, very few. Most are 50% of the videos are five minutes duration. So these two are very introductory courses. They are very useful for beginners. We wrote these two. We did these two uh, courses really targeting for MBBS students starting from first MBBS or any other allied field. But we found that many others have found them useful because when you want to teach a junior, this approach will work very well. So please do go through these. They're pretty short. Then for these, you have to be enrolled with us. We ask an individual for 2000 rupees for a year of involvement where you can do this learning, relearning any number of times, plus take help from us for any specific searching, referencing, etc. So there's a detailed course on mastering puppet right up to the level of how do you do a search in order to write a systematic review. And in such cases, we ask you to do the search, send it to us, then we have a Zoom call, help you out by refining it, making it better and better so that you gradually, year by year, you get better at doing this. Then this item, which I just taught you, it's in a lot more detail. And we also have a library of resources with several different websites plus several different useful articles, all related to writing, reading, research. So, this is an email ID I can be contacted on. This reaches three of us in my organization. So we do our best to see that you get a response. Uh, yeah. so, fine. so with that, I'm done and I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Vasumati. <laughs> Thank, Thank you me. very much. I think all 46 audience, I think, including excluding you 45, they are so fortunate to hear you today. And you know, surprisingly, out of context, on out of context, I tell you something. Morning, six thirty to seven thirty lecture. By default, my husband is also listening because we go for a walk after starting lecture. And after hearing today's lecture, he is professor at IIT, professor and head of the department at IIT Delhi. After hearing today's lecture, he has requested that can I take this recording for my students? So I'm just taking Definitely, your... definitely you can. I said that we will request that she can take uh, a separate lecture for your students. 
Of course, so, he, he knows every, he understands and he has heard so many times constipation, dyspnea and everything, but he has never demanded any. <laughs> but first time he has said that I need this recording. But right. actually, so the only, as far as doing it for them, again, I end up doing it only on medical topics. So they'll have yeah, to no, no, context. No, that's it. Just, thing. just, that. and yeah. because I, I'm going to forward this. Uh, sure, sure. Most welcome. Uh, any other questions? So, I'll be happy to take. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Please summarize the citation part. Okay. What exactly do you mean by that is something I'd like to understand. You can open your uh, mic. What exactly you want? Yeah, that will be better. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you have to, uh, towards the last of the lecture, have to uh, do the citation. Can you repeat that one? That is you want me to? I'll just, I'll quickly do that. Just give me a second. Do I teach EndNote other reference managers? I'm planning to add a Zotero tutorial, but not EndNote because EndNote is paid. So we try and focus only on um, this thing. COVID and systematic review softwares. I have not got into great detail, but if you know anyone who's enrolled with us on an annual basis, any kind of thing, I do try and assist. I you know if you say something like COVID and um, I think it's free for only one item at a time. So I usually ask for a share of your login so that I can get in and see what the problem is and assist. That's the kind of thing. So I'll just quickly screen share and repeat that last bit for Dr. Neetu. Yeah. So word plugin has to be there. That part was there. Yeah. So suppose I'm writing this article. My cursor is on this references tab. I want to insert a citation here. I position it here. I click insert citation. A pop-up will come. I have two choices. One is if I remember the details of author, your uh, title, word, something like that, I can keep typing that in. It will start showing up here. See, all this in my video tutorials on humedcourses.in is even more clear. Here, for want of time, I keep it short like this. It shows up here. I can pick the article by clicking there and click OK. The number will come in here. The other option is I click go to Mendeley. I'm taken to Mendeley. I will find my item there and click the site button, which comes up on the menu only when we go from here. Either way, the citation gets inserted here. Like that, I've written second paragraph, inserted items two, three, four, five, whatever I wanted to incite at those places, I've done. In the end, we have the heading references, the cursor below that. Click insert bibliography. Whatever we have cited up in the article comes in here. That's how we do it. Then there is lots more about how do you edit, how do you add something, delete something, all those we've covered in the um video tutorials there uh there mm -hmm. is one question from kusum uh, yeah. have you have you addressed this how to sync to reference management how manage to sync to reference manager citation could you again unmute and uh, ask that i haven't exactly kusum please unmute yourself good morning ma'am yeah ma'am ma yeah. kusum ma'am i am i am doing phd from aims rishikesh um, I had a query. Yeah. Earlier, I was using the Zotero uh, referencing manager and uh, I, I just want to switch it and I, I would like to now use and not. So how to share both libraries? That is my one of the queries. Usually when you're switching from one to another, you have to do something called exporting. So in Zotero, you'll have to see where all your stuff is and export all of them. In EndNote, you'll have to import all of them. Okay, okay. We've taught in detail in our video courses for Mendeley. How do you export? For the other tool, you'll have to go and see how in Mendeley we learned how to import. Same way in the other one, you'll have to learn how to import. Usually, if you've understood one software pretty well, then in the other one, you go looking for features and finding it out. That's how it works. But the principle is export first and then import. 
And today, many softwares actually have a button which say import from Zotero or import from Mendeley, that kind of thing. You know, they want people to move from another one to there. So they've actually put in such features. Just go look for them, you'll find them. Yeah. Any more questions? So thank you for your nice words, everybody. So many compliments, <laughs> but this is just, a, just, it has come naturally. I think you well, have- I would just like to add, there are two elements in this. One is I'm all the time doing this, you know, creating video tutorials, doing this, etc. Plus I come from a family of excellent teachers. So I'm blessed with great teaching skills. Every opportunity to teach is a blessing. So I enjoy it as much. But it was such a simple language and uh, simple English. Everybody must have understood absolutely. Whether it was rightly is straight away. So uh, thank Dr. you very Rajini, much. Thank you. I hope lots more people enroll and learn. Please recommend them to your respective institutions because for institutions, we have even uh, more uh, attractive pricing because we actually want institutions to enroll so that large numbers enroll, learn. We want this knowledge to be spread through every medical college, hospital, small research centers, absolutely everywhere. Our biggest aim is to see how this can get into the curriculum itself, not necessarily as compulsory and without this, you don't get your degree or something like that, but as highly recommended learning. And definitely, whenever I will get an opportunity to recommend yeah. any on the, any platform, I will definitely do this. I, it is, it is so good. Yes. All those who are writing that we wanted for different specialties, any health science stuff, most welcome. Others, yes, but they have to live with my health science examples. That's my only. But anybody. So Dr. Rajini wants for her pulmonology student. Yes, Dr. yes. Dr. Gynec gynec here, everybody. Definitely, definitely, please use it. Okay. Most welcome. Thank you. Right. thank you very much. So thank, thank you, you all. Thanks a lot. Thank, uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. So all the audience, thank you very much for joining early morning. We will see you next week. Archana, when we will see or we are breaking now? Archana? Um, Next Monday, ma'am, with Dr. Shirley's uh, lecture okay, on quality. So next program. Monday, we will have a Dr. Shirley's lecture. And thank you very much. Have a nice week. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.